their budget. Yeah. Right. So much for mapping only. Still there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So was there a motion? I did. Okay. Second. I, Second. I have a question that um, in the bank we have a fund that belongs to the planning commission that's had a thousand dollars sitting in it, I guess, for quite some time. Um, why isn't that money being used? They probably don't even know it's there. <laughs> so yes, that yeah, would, let's suck, so let's let's suck, suck that right, right up. out yeah. and put yeah. it into paying. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Got it. Oh, there's, one less, there's one less fund we have to worry yeah, about. Right. Yeah, yep. exactly. Okay. Awesome. I mean, yeah. You heard that, right, Patty? I, heard I, have, it in the, I have it in the minutes. <laughs> no. Patty doesn't. Patty doesn't like funds. <laughs> no, it's not. She no. just wants approval to. She just wants approval to the funds. That's, that's so, fine. Okay, you can vote on it. Now you can vote. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Review of latest 2019 town plan draft with input. Planning commission representative to attend. Yeah, Mitch is supposed to be here, so if you guys, uh, you might want to skip over. Well, let's keep going. Yeah. Let's keep going. Uh, treasurer's report. Um, well, I was just going to report on that. You guys all have the, the uh, grand, list. grand list, so you know the summary on that. Um, the other thing, I have an insurance bill here for um, d and for Welch Park that we received April 28th. They want, old Johnson wants him money by 5-8. Not me anymore. <laughs> Don't I me. mean, whoa. <laughs> but, so. but that should be, I think I responded to Sarah. Um, he should sign that paperwork. This isn't a, this isn't a, yeah. Okay. This isn't a... So who authorizes the payment? Him? I would say so. I mean, well, well no. I we pay their, to, we pay their bills. No, we pay their bills and right. then collect from so them. So it's on my warrant. So who's to, authorizing it? <laughs> we can authorize the payment. Okay. I just don't think we should be signing that okay. stupid fee thing that they, that they sent out. Now, if he's not around... I guess I can sign it as a member of the Welch Park board, but not as the chairman of the select board or something. Yeah, like well, that. it's just said insured signature, so it's all it says. Um, yeah, you can actually sit right there. That's all it says. Yeah, so I don't know if you want to get hold of Carl. No, or it'll what? you chasing Carl will drive you crazy. Huh? Well, I'm just asking. I'm going to put Welch Park board under my name. How long is the bill? How much is the bill? Well, funded, yeah, it's the DNO for Welch Park. This is this is just a fee agreement. The, the broker's charging a hundred dollar fee, and they need yeah. a sign. Yeah. Uh, this is the <coughs> seventh. Yeah. <coughs> I never did know who is on the Welch Park board. And am I supposed to up the thing about? I think two or three of us are so exactly who it is. It who knows? We've got a little work to do on the Welsh Park situation, as I'm sure you will agree. I went through that. It's not. It's not. Okay. I, I mean, I don't have You want to talk? What, you, you might want to give them a line. Uh, right, and then they can decide if right. they want to. So, you just actually, you have a better handle on it than. So we're going to have we're going to have an issue with the warning that was voted on at town meeting regarding the first tax payment being mm -hmm. due on April on August 20th. We're not going to be able to make it with the if in the best case scenario with these uh, this unified union school district budget. We're just not there's just no way we're going to be able to get tax bills uh, payable by August 20th. We have to have 30 days between the time that we issue the bill versus the time to pay it. And we have an election on the 21st of May for the board of, for the board of the of the, the new super school directors. They've got to be able to put together a budget as soon as possible. If, in the best case scenario, they're able to put together the budget by the 24th or the 27th. We're looking at probably they need 30 days to warn a budget vote, so uh, tentatively... That's the assuming they can put the budget together in two days. Right, and yeah. then tentatively the school district is looking at a June 25th budget. 
if that budget passes, we need to wait 30 days for any challenges. Uh, even if the state can dummy up a tax rate for us and the board can meet and kind of get an idea about what's going on, the earliest we possibly could, re could publish a bill, produce bills, would be voted on like July 20, like July 30th, and then like let's say we get out July 31st, we have people have would have until August 30th to pay their tax bills. We couldn't, we couldn't, the taxes would not be due by August 20th. They couldn't be due by August 20th. The earliest they could possibly do be due is August 30th. So the question is, how do we handle this? Um, I'm glad you said that all for me. <laughs> how, how we handle it. So I've been, I've been, I've been thinking about this, and I think what we do is when we would normally be sending out the tax bills, which would be in the second week of July or something like that, we send out a notice and say, due to the fact that the school budget is still in process, we don't anticipate that we will have tax bills available until such and such a date, and the due date of the first quarterly installment will be X. No. Quarterly or half? What? Quarterly. 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 We did quarterly. Oh, you voted for quarterly. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what I don't know is, let me, let me just finish, what I don't know is if we can just do that or we have to have Sarah some. This is where answer. I'm here to help. All right. Sarah okay. Perfect. Answer. I talked to the Secretary of State's office and they said that if the voters warned the meetings with a specific date and time, we have to have a vote to rescind that. Who's we? we? The town. So we have to have another yet election. another election because... Well, Patty's thinking that maybe because we're going beyond, we're not like moving the deadline up, we're, we're extending it, that maybe we might be able to get away with... I'm going to call the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. The Secretary, that's the Secretary of State's answer. I suppose we could go to the VLCT or a lawyer, but his... They're, they're, I mean, I can see they're a logic. What about we just there. assess um, town taxes? Because they're so small. <laughs> but that would meet the date criteria. The school doesn't have anything available, and when they do, like, or in the next quarter, we'll then throw theirs in. Well, the other, the other idea, the other idea I had, which is the real nightmare scenario, is. We send out a tax bill with last year's tax rate, and so no, you're going to get an amended that. tax bill. You can't, you can't, you can't do, do that. that. And the other mm. problem to your suggestion is we deal with so many um, banks and escrow companies yeah, can you imagine? that what they'll do is change everybody's escrow if they get <laughs> For a small tax bill. $152. Right. <laughs> you can't, it's going to be a, you couldn't do that. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of talk and action about this in the next 30 or 60 days. We're not the only ones dealing no, with sure. this. Right. So uh, maybe the Secretary of State will come out with some special proclamation that we can just extend the date because we have no choice. <laughs> yeah. That would Who be knows nice. what special they'll do. Well, I just, hate the, I just hate the prospect of yet one more oh, election that people don't understand. And, yeah, there'll be a bad and what happens? Bad and what happens, what happens if we have an election and they turn it down? Then what the hell <laughs> Yeah, there's always a right. possibility. Because well, they're confused said. and don't understand. So they just say, we don't want to do this. Right. But what, you can't just extend that tax due date, that first payment? Why? That's yeah. what the Secretary of State is saying. They're right. saying that's what the voters, that vote. the town voters voted for that day. So. Oh. Well, now we have to keep that in mind when we do our warnings for next year. Or some we'll date like thereafter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or some, yeah. whatever, whatever date we get forced into by the state of Vermont. <laughs> Sometime. Depending on the state. Well, depending you know, on our mood. <laughs> I just think, I just think it, it's going to be whatever it is. But, you know, if the worst case is that we have to have a vote, maybe we can combine it with a, one of these other votes we're having to have. That's somehow. what I would do. Yeah. Combine it with another thing, but we're also going to need to be we're also going to need to warn that 30 days ourselves. So you know, it's summer. People have vacation schedules. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff's going to happen. Vacations. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, anyway. that was it. Okay. Where was that on the on the agenda? It was just <laughs> on the treasurer's report. report. Treasurer's report because it just barely came up. Mm.
Oh, we've already passed over the other things? Well, we no. did because Mitch wasn't right here. here when we so now Mitch we're the here. <coughs> so you're our, you're our designated representative. Lucky you. That's me. Okay. So let's go back and so just to back up a little bit before we start this, we don't have the time tonight to do an exhaustive analysis of this, but if there are any obvious changes that should be made before the meeting Thursday, right? Thursday? Yeah. On May 9th. You know, this is the time to this is the time to make them. And you know, we're gonna have yet another chance to go through this. This is the town plan. The town yeah. plan. But the better we can do at having the town plan as good as it can be for the first hearing, the better it is. So I did <laughs> I did force myself to sit down for three hours today. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> Oh, it was painful. And I got, uh, to, I got to three pages before the map. So and I got and and got through it. And I have a series of things, Mitch, that I would say are are very minor things that I would just quickly go through. Okay. But I have a couple that I think are pretty important. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if somebody else wants to start, or I'm mm -hmm. happy to start. So the important ones that I came up with was the school section needs to be redone to reflect the current reality and whether you just put in a paragraph and say you know subsequent to the first draft this has happened there's still the possibility that the legislature might change you know something because it just mm -hmm. right now it doesn't at all reflect what's right. going on in the wind and i think we realized that that was in flux and we just want to get something on paper no that's that's fine but all but all i'm saying is and I'm not saying you necessarily have to have to do this before uh, before Thursday, but when you're going through it, to say to people, obviously the school section needs to be substantially updated or amended or whatever word that's, you want to use. And the other big thing that that jumped out at me, big thing, um, was that uh, the maps are impossible to see or decipher. Not the ones so much in the appendix, those were better, but the ones that are in the body of the plan. Yeah. So I wonder if it wouldn't be better, just because if they're bigger, they're clearer. And I, you probably don't want to insert a page in the middle of the plan, but just refer to the appendix and put the maps all in the appendix. It's, I don't know if anybody else felt that they way. Were, I thought yeah, they were very yeah, difficult yeah. to... I didn't bother I, looking at them in the, in the small. Yeah, I don't and if you print them off in black and white, then, then they're even totally worse. Oh, you can't. Then they're right. totally worse because they're I all mean, different yeah. shades of gray. Yeah. yeah. On that point, there's something where they talk about priority areas, and I think it's in the. I didn't understand it at all. I'm just looking to see if I can find it. One of those, like this map, maybe it's here on page 34. State of Vermont, natural resources, highest priority, priority, I don't know, priority for what? I mean, it just kind of comes up, <clears throat> and I said, what does this mean? I mean, if I can't figure oh. it out, then I figure. Wasn't that the fishing um, areas uh, that were? Forests and fields. Yeah, so that was the that was the upgrading of the, yeah, the upgrading which of we the talked the about. streams, which we yeah. talked about. Yeah, not that long ago. But I'm it should sure be it action. should be clear in the town well, plan so everybody can understand what it is. I just think it <clears> needs <throat> a little more explanation. Explanation. This one on page thirty-four, forests and fields, two point two. Thirty-three. Page thirty-three. Oh, you're looking over my shoulder. Because <laughs> you said thirty-four twice. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to really confuse us. <clears throat> well, that's because I first found what I was looking for. So. <laughs> Let me just, a couple of other quick things here. So on page 18, it says 26% say that the lack of ethnic diversity in Middlesex is the most pressing issue. Uh, then oh, yeah. then when you see the chart at the end, it doesn't say the same thing. Mm -hmm. So... You know, the other thing that the other thing that that I found challenging was figuring out where the data came from. So sometimes you say, you know, this is this is where it came from, 
But is it, you know, is it the town survey? Is it? Is it from the vision of Middlesex? Yeah, or the, right. Yeah, those are the two most quoted portions, so, um, yeah. But, I mean, to me, number one, it was a surprise that that, that, to me, that that was the most pressing issue. But if that's what the survey says, mm -hmm. and then it should say, according to the survey, um, Which is 300 people. Yeah. And so 16 percent. So that that surprised me. There's also someplace else where you say, quoting perhaps the same source, that the highest priority is something else, like transportation. Or well, there are different highest priorities in different sections. Yeah, which right. Is, which is fine, but yeah. So, yeah. I just found it confusing that you use highest priority for two or three different things, and it should be clarified, and I can't tell you the site. could be referring to different questions in the survey. I, I'd have to look right. at that more just, carefully. Right. But you should clarify it, yeah, because I can't remember how the survey was done, because I may not have So here, here again, and this, this is just a quickie, on page 48, there's the chart of the, of the town land, and... I didn't like that on the 14.75 acres BOR and garage, it says school use. I think it should say community use. That's a good point. I mean, to me, yes, the school uses it, but it isn't for school. Yeah, you know what I mean? I agree with you. That, that's town property, not school property. Mm -hmm. That's that's the point. Yep. And you that's have you have said that um, repeatedly. In the in the written section, <coughs> it says that. Right. But it doesn't reflect it on there. Well, that's a good and then the other thing, I thought was a little weird in that chart is, two thirds of the way down it says four acres North Branch Portal Road. Should say North Branch Cemetery. Yeah, it's what, should say cemetery under the description. Right. I noticed that. Too. Right. Yeah. Right. In the chart. You didn't bring yours with you, did you? Uh, that's all right. That's what I'm here for. Just got to memorize. <laughs> On page 49. How do you remember these pages? I have a hard copy. Because I wrote down my notes because I was reading it on my iPad, so I couldn't, you know, it's a PDF. You can't. Well, Mitch has to add stuff about the duties and programs on 49. All right, that's fine. The other thing on 49 is somewhere on 49, it says uh, that the recreational facilities are maintained by the rec committee. Yep, that will update that. Yep. <laughs> let's let's zip that. There no longer is a rec committee. Page 51. I have hey. to say, yeah. Go ahead, Mary. I have to say I really enjoyed reading this because it's well, a lot of well, things. Well, there's a lot of good been, stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff we've been working on piecemeal, and it's really nice to read it all together. I will definitely report that positive feedback. So well, I, you. you know, I, it's, I, it shouldn't just all be negative. Yeah. It no, was no, a this, really this isn't negative. Experience. This is more in the line of just... So here's a question, though. So yes. on, on page 49, strategy 48 says... Identify potential trail routes that can serve as safer and more inviting transportation corridors that pedestrians, bikers, skiers, etc. can use to get around town. Fine with that. For example, an off-the-road path from the Rumney School to the village. Excuse me. <laughs> That's going to be great. <laughs> that sounds like a town highway. That's a path. I mean, that just... Yeah, but how, are you, how, in the world, how in the world are you going to find your way from All the Rumney mountains. School... I'm going to do it. I, th I think that's a mistake. Don't do if you want to say to Wrightsville, I think it is, in my mind, feasible to create a path from the school to Wrightsville. Yeah, I think, yeah. Th there's been, the trails group has Three. talked about some dreamy, aspirational things about connecting different parts of the town, but... Well, I village just, is a school. That's a that's, that's a, a stretch. Reach. We got a lot of other things to worry yeah. about before Wait. we start oh, well. doing that. So I would yeah, I'll, that one. Um, I don't see where the four example is. Are you still? Oh, I'm. Still oh, my God! Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Speak up. No, I was just going to say. Um, I personally, and we sort of talked about this at the end of the meeting the other night. Um, 
uh, I personally would like to acknowledge that I have a concern as a select board member of, on my old draft 411, page 26, about where it says Middlesex is an attractive location with its proximity to the state capitol, blah, blah, blah. The town currently has no concerns regarding vacation homes or temporary rentals of homes. So I feel like with the rise of Airbnb, that's not something we want to leave for the next five years of not acknowledging Eight that years. that's happening. Eight years. Yeah, right. right. I so agree. I think we need to say something about that. Like we are exploring how Airbnb and other rentals are affecting our... That's a, that's a good It could be property agree. taxes, it mm -hmm. could be roads, it could be... Well, use of our infrastructure. Whatever. Yeah, use of, yeah. So I don't want to leave that. Yeah, like we just no. say, but we are aware. Yeah. Not that we don't have any concerns. Okay. Mitch, too. Page. I, 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 no, it's not that. It's just I have just little typos and and oh, yeah. spelling stuff that I sure. just drop that off. I'm not going to like tell everyone. I'm just going to okay. give you my you can email. Yeah, or just give it to me. That's yeah, fine. I'd rather do that than there's because um, I could be get dozens it. of those. And yeah, yeah we tried, I figured. We, I know. We've caught a lot, and there's still many more to be right. caught. I, I caught one too, but it's the one where you Only say as one? well as, and then come you on, say, Mary, <laughs> step well, up your so game. <laughs> I, I didn't have a lot of time. Steve knows I'd only read 33 pages. I'm just funning you. <laughs> when I saw him yesterday afternoon. <laughs> okay, so page page 54 prohibits. Can, can I just say on page 50 for doing it? Um, I didn't think there was any acknowledgement of the work that the select board had done on, t on town roads when you were talking about class four, class three, and stuff like that. I just, my note says no acknowledgement of work by select board. I just think it acts as if we have just kind of, we're letting them all fall by the wayside and we didn't take an active role to assess them. <coughs> and we downgraded some from threes to fours. So I just think that might be added in. Sorry, Peter, now it's Okay, no. Forward. I'm finding my place. So on page uh, 54, and I know this is something we talked about a while ago. We're talking about where you cannot, where it's prohibited to have solar farms or commercial wind. And I think it is appropriate um, the land over 1,500 feet thing and 1,400 feet for dumpling hill, that's good. The 25% slopes is a question for me because before, but between blocking out the land over 1,500 feet, which is a lot of our town, and then Somewhere in there it says 30% of the town, the slopes are more than 25%. I mean, you could have a slope right here which is 25%, yeah. and you're going to say you can't put a windmill there if you want to? So yeah. I don't think that's the right thing to say. Okay. I would just delete it, but again, I don't know how everybody else feels no, about I, that. I agree with that. I mean, we should have control of where they but, go. We should have control of where they go, but there's, there's a lot of land that it's on slope. But I just, I just don't like where it says cannot. It doesn't say must be reviewed, must be carefully considered, you know, anything like that. It just says no. So, right. I don't think that's right. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure we take another look at that as well. Believe it or not, I, believe it or not, I am getting there. So page 57, it says in the village, new roads and curb cuts will be prohibited. I saw I saw that too and I said, geez, if we're encouraging how it to gonna, be a How hub. are we going to develop the village if we can't have a new curb cut or potentially a new road right. somewhere if we need one? Yep. It just didn't make, didn't sound right to me. Because uh, they're saying the future development should be served by the existing road and curb cut. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was one of my two. Well, I mean, the curb cuts is insane because well, you know all this stuff is is gonna, you know, you want. But even the road. Traffic. Let's say, let's say, uh, let's say, Welsh Park needs another little road or something. I mean, there isn't a lot of room for additional roads. I admit, right, but, but just to say there can't be any, no matter what. Well, I think if the curb cuts is more significant. If this is supposed well, to I be think the we village, just, I think it shouldn't say that they're prohibited or whatever. It's right. Like. Says. Even though this isn't the zoning, this is the town plan, which lends itself yeah. to that zoning. Well, it's so, going to lead to it. Yeah. Well, what is the zoning? And then they're going to say, say "Oh, your that. your zoning doesn't conform with your town plan." Whereas through most of this, you're you're.
saying that you really want the development in the village and it's encouraged and right. Um, well, that's a good catch too. We'll, we'll address that. I'm getting close. 59, it talks about people wanting more paved roads, which is fine. People can want more paved roads. Yeah, they can want that. They what it, they get what it doesn't more say, more though, more. which it should say, is <coughs> these requests have been considered by the select board over the years, and the cost is prohibitive to A, pave the road, and B, maintain it. Also, why is it that you didn't have any statistics for that statement? <clears throat> you did this survey when it says it's been frequently discussed. Is, part, is, give me that one again. How come you don't have a survey question or something, 28%? Wasn't 40%. on the survey. It oh, wasn't on the survey. Good answer. It wasn't in the vision of Middlesex either? Um, I don't, I don't no, remember. I think so. The survey evolved over a long period of time, and we well, couldn't ask all just, the questions that we I might have wished want, to. I just want the money issue to be out there, because yep. that's, oh, that, that, that's, that, that's, 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 that's the big issue. Page 61, Phil, you're up. It doesn't discuss your efforts towards promoting broadband. Well, it yeah. should, because that's... Yeah. And I should say that how many towns? 17? 17, I think. Yeah. Collaboration. Yeah, so, so I don't know if you, you can give Mitch a little paragraph that could be inserted okay. in there. I yeah. think it should be in there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, only 13 then? Would you say? No, I thought around 17. That's what I thought. Which page were we looking at? The, uh, um, six, six, it's one. that section on broadband. On broadband. Yep. That's yeah, on page 61. Um, I think it should say somewhere on page 62, it's anticipated that once the new town plan is approved, the next task for the town is to update the zoning regulations. Yep. Because yeah, it doesn't expressly say that in there. It okay. says they're updated from time to time or something well, like that. And it and also says the last time they were updated is 15, I think it said, which was true. I think, I think actually the... Zoning regulations were updated in like January of 2017, right before I became the zoning administrator. Yeah. It might we have been a very minor. minor. We did some minor edits, but yes. we didn't do okay. what we didn't yeah. do right. the major. It might have okay. been 17. Okay, the cover That's letter said adopted. I didn't look to see how right. they changed right. from. No, no, no. We did so. I forget okay. what we did, but we did some it kind of minor. It was all minor. Correcting stuff. Yep. Yeah. I am finished. Thank it you does for probably your time say somewhere in here as well that. Um, we looked at the question of implementing what's called an enhanced energy plan, and what we found out from the state is that it's going to take 9 to 12 months to do a good job on that, and what we mentioned someplace in here is that we intend to adopt an enhanced energy plan, but it's not going to be part of this town plan. We'll amend the town plan when we craft that. Yeah. But enhanced energy plan updating zoning regulations, those will be the two things down the road. And yes. Um, in addition to the zoning regulations, I, I assume you're going to look at the, the zones themselves, the location of the That's zones. That's part of the zoning regulations. Part of the regulations, yes. Okay. Yes. And that was what, when we, when we did the zoning regulations the last time, we decided not to do that, and we said that really needs to be done, and we should do it the next time. And that is where I see the big, the maps. one of the big scraps is coming. The maps or, the, or what's in the, the map. conditional? The map. Oh. So, you know, what should be conservation, what should be rural residential, what should be, you know, I mean, it's going to be the, it's going to be the mixed use, you know, you know where the action's going to be. Village. Yeah. Did anybody throughout this, they talk about one acre, I mean, one acre minimums, two acre minimums, five acre. Did, did that cause concern to anybody, or is that in compliance with what we currently have in our zoning regs? It I shows, it shows <laughs> in this document, it shows how our zoning regulations currently lay out the different districts. Yeah, just a brief. Yeah, yeah but it yeah. says, yeah. you know, so many acres, such a density, you right. know, what the overview. It doesn't oh. say what's permitted in those. I know, but does anybody have a question about that? 
I could. Well, they're going to, Mary, they're going to be, <laughs> when we get into the zoning regulations, that's going to be a whole yeah, different quality. Lots of people have questions about if that. If it's in this town plan, that we can't change it after the town plan's it up. Right? No, that is not, that is not specified in the town plan. It's specified in the zoning regulations. Oh, so when? It just says in the town <coughs> plan what the zoning regulations currently say. Oh, so they don't, they don't suggest it? Yeah. No. Okay, well, I have one other question. It says, no. not that I'm in favor of this, strategy 65 on page 63, it's um, avoid strip develop, development around the interchange. And I just, yeah, I looked at that too. I just couldn't find anything where you discussed it really, that, that when you had this discussion, you never mentioned that, and all of a sudden, it's a strategy. And I'm not opposed to it. I mean, I don't want it to look like a very Montpelier Road, but I was just kind of, where did you come from other than... Especially if you can't have any new roads or curb cuts, how are you going to have anything but strip yeah. development? You know, I, I don't want to have a cracker barrel. Isn't that what, what is he once recommended? Our big landowner. Yeah, but you can put a cracker barrel in a strip. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, all I'm saying is that... The, the you know, permitted if you're gonna, use is the... I'm sorry. If you're going to have it in... I know, I know, I know, I know. If you're going to have it in, I mean, there, I think there should be a little bit of discussion on sure. how you got to that strategy. Right. Fair point. So does anyone else have any... I have some <clears throat> other minor stuff, but it's... Well, what I would suggest, if you have minor th stuff or any other thoughts, submit you... Yeah. Know. Okay. That's great. It looks like a lot of work, though. Oh, I know. oh it I mean, is a lot of work. I really appreciate work, it. Yeah. It's phenomenal. I actually stuff. learned some stuff. Yeah, I, I did too. Know. I found it really interesting. I didn't know about the hemp place. <laughs> okay, so we have this uh, board of abatement here, born for five thirty. So we should. Uh, other business. Yeah, we just we have a board of abatement here, and we have a board of civil authority meeting because we have to break now to go to those things. Right. Are you not doing other business today? We, we are. We just, it's not Who is it? Hi. Hey, so, oh, no, no, no. I just was, it's under the other business piece. 20 or oh, the, uh, the culvert thing. Yeah, we just, things got screwed up. Okay, so not tonight. So, no. do you want to talk about Culvert Hill Road? Yeah, I just, do you want I to do it really was, fast? Well, yeah, here. let's okay. do it really fast. Okay, really fast. Um, so I think many of I'm us... I'm Mary Skinner. Hi, I'm Sonia Gron. I live on Culver Hill. Um, so I think um, Liz had put out something on our little local hill thing um, asking about road conditions, and my concern was not really so much road conditions, was access from Culver Hill onto Route 12. The intersection. Um, the intersection, yeah. So I did talk with somebody um, at the Agency of Transportation, and they said, you know, you got to really start at your select board level. Uh, it, where the select, yeah, I know. Well, anyways, I'm not going to get into the state issues, but yeah. so I think many of our concerns are the rate of speed that is coming from Worcester. Um, yeah, so from why Worcester. Is, I, to, I understand that, but why is the state say you have to start with us? When because it's, it's a state highway. It, it is a state highway, but because it abuts a town road. So they want us to complain like about the speed. So I'm just like. You know, or signs, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Well, so I, I just want. We have no authority to put signs in the state That's highway the right away. I mean, no. yeah. it might be coming off Shady Rill either way. You got to worry about. Yeah, that. but at least coming off Shady Rill, you can see if the you're going to take a left, or you can take, you can see if you're going to take a right. I didn't On have Culver, a chance. I was, I was going to try and go down there okay. and see if, and I, I think I said it to you, Sarah. Yeah. See if, if we got the state to cut trees or do Somebody whatever to improve the sight lines. Right. Right, right. That would go a long way towards solving that problem. Huge. I mean, the speeding issue. Yeah. Out of our hands. I mean, we. That's yeah. our. That's out of your hands. I understand. That's and and Kim Bulldog, who's our town rep for state police, was going to actually talk to them about that. But I know years ago they stopped the bus from going even the U32 bus taking a right-hand turn up of Culver Hill because Dave Dennis had a, there was an accident down right. there. Right. Um, so I have not had issues in the past. I witnessed a close call the other day, and I had a close call the other day. I had a close call this morning. Okay, mm -hmm. see, and, I mean, and it's, it's every day. Yeah. It is extremely dangerous, and the people get really, really angry with you, and they'll ride your tail all the way into yeah. Montpelier, which is fine with me. I don't have a problem with And that. actually, right now, <laughs> it's the clearest you're going to see it because there's no exactly. grass and I was just no going to mention snow. it. Yeah, there's no are, snow. Are there, are there 
improvements that could be made within the state right away, though, to make the set lines better? Like you know, if they created a thing you could mow and cut trees? And well, I, I like I the think, idea of a mirror, too. Well, actually, I think the real issue is that there's a hill, so people are coming up a hill, and they just come up and they intersect really quickly. The only sign, too, that's coming from Worcester is the T that shows you can either go straight or you can take a right-hand oh, turn. That's, that's, all right that's on there, but you see it from over. You don't see it from you don't. Worcester. If yeah, coming no, from coming from Worcester, well, you just see. Well, it tells you that there's a road coming on the I side. guess the message is, <laughs> and, you know, I'm speaking for the select board, yeah. but, you know, they would have to agree, but we'll support and do whatever you need us to do for the okay. state. If we can figure out what if it is we we're it. what it is okay. we're asking for the speed thing, obviously we're asking for all the time, and it's just. Right. It just me to say something. I got a call about a year ago from a guy who was working for as a consultant for Du Bois, not this Du Bois, he said, <coughs> other Du Bois. I don't even know. And they were looking for I, problems on Route 12, and I said to him the access problem going into people going into cross from where Shady Rill is, they go into play. They're pulling in and out of there all the time. Mm. Why don't I try to hunt him down and give him a call and say Phenomenal. he had and say, this is a major issue in this yeah. So the speed limit there, the speed it's limit the window down to here, um, and if your car doesn't have a lot of pickup, like <coughs> I couldn't be like I have come so Maybe close to getting smashed into. Yeah, I'm just going to explain to these people. Well, my son would so, like that. Yeah, we we unfortunately okay, so we, we, we got to so let me call them and I'll that's fine. Them. I mean, I just. We're, we're, I'm trying to bring it yeah. before there's so a major accident or no, fatality out there. Very so. much. Okay. okay. Liz, so it isn't like Liz has been silent on this issue. Well, I, know. <laughs> I wish more would be vocal on it. So, Do so you, if you need... She won't let us forget. I will. Yeah, thank you. So just for just for form to start things off, and then we'll have our little, uh, little election, but I will call the uh, Board of Abatement hearing to order at 17 minutes, 17 minutes of. Welcome everyone. Um, I think it would be helpful for all of us to go around the room and introduce ourselves. I'm Peter Hood. I'm a member of the select board and the chairman. I may be the chairman of this group, but I'm not that yet. Anyway. I'm Liz Sharp. I'm on the select board. I'm the board of the And board of abatement. And the board of abatement. Sorry. Yes. Hi. I'm uh, Sarah Merriman, I'm the town clerk, and I'm also I'm a, a select board assistant, but I also have to be on the board of abatement. So there you go. I'm Francis Cannon. I'm David Grieberger, attorney. Okay. Janet Banyan, the mom. <laughs> oh, okay. Eric Young, Lister, board of abatement. Amy Whitehorn, Lister, board of abatement. Dick Alderman, the same. Mary Skinner, a member of the board of abatement and the select board. Phil Hayat. Uh, select Board and Board of Abatement. Steve Martin, Select Board, Board of Abatement. Dorinda Crowell, Treasurer and Board of Abatement. And are there any amendments to the agenda? I presume no. Nope. So we next need to have our organizational meeting and we need to designate a chair. Are there any nominations? I nominate Peter Hood. I'll no second. <laughs> Are there any other nominations? <laughs> the nominations are closed. <laughs> All those in favor of Peter Hood to be chairman, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, there we go. All right, so now we are to the hearing of Francis Cannon's request to abate the penalties and interest owed on 2015 and 2016 taxes accrued on this property at 531 Center Road. So, you want to amend that? Yes. We would like to amend that. That request? The request is to amend it to include the taxes that were actually due to. My client came in and didn't quite understand the process and didn't see why she's getting all these extra charges, but I would like to explain why uh, none of it got paid. That wasn't included in our request. I didn't prepare the request. We realized that, but we sent it when we first got the notice, and then we inquired and realized there was a major mistake. And we wished she wishes to amend that agreement. What is it you're trying to amend? So the, re the request was, the written request for the hearing asked for the penalty and interest to be abated. And now they're saying they want to amend their request to also abate the taxes. 
2015-2016 tax. Right. Not the 2018 tax. She's, she's already paid that. That's what they meant for. Okay, so you want amended to include just not just the penalties and interest, but also the 2015-16 tax. Yes. 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 So. And what about the? I, I'm Go sorry, ahead. I just want to be clear, clear. What about the interest? Because the the payment that came in for the 2018 taxes, you didn't. There's no payment. There's no interest and penalties on that. Do you want to amend it to include the penalties and interest on the 2018 taxes? Well, that's her request. Oh, uh, right. That's the request. But that is the request. Yes. So. So wait a minute. <laughs> we've yeah. about we've increased the amount of the requested abatement at least fivefold here. Right. Um, this is a big change. This isn't a little change. So if, if we're going to do this and consider this tonight, I think we need a, we need a motion to agree to change the request. You don't. You don't. You don't. We don't? No, this, is not, this is not that type of hearing. This is not that. It's a dilute. They can make, they can make a request. They can request whatever they you, want. We, we, you can okay. make a request. All right. okay. No, it's Thank not you. a select board hearing. So it's you know it was warned for one thing. It's a completely, it's a quasi-judiciary. Okay. okay. Yeah, but on the other hand, you know, you're not allowed to, at the very last minute, just change the, the relief you're requesting. I mean, there's been no notice to the board of abatement that this was going to be substantially different. And I think it goes to the discretion of the board whether to allow it. Well, that's true. But I mean, I mean it wouldn't you know, Peters like, you know, you come in and say penalties and interest, and suddenly it's all the taxes. And yep. I mean, it's substantially different. I mean, I don't know if you guys were prepared to argue that, but I didn't prepare for that issue as one member of the board. If it's quasi judicial, that's the judicial approach. Uh, it's the same reason for both. Uh, I was not. Huge change. That's all I'm saying. It's I don't know the. I don't know the. I, I have no calculation of what the amount of money is. But the penalties and interest are one thing. Abate, abating all the taxes is and another you have thing. It, Do you have a surrender? Should be. Is it in the packet? I, I included all the, the tax history in the packet. Did you include yeah, anything? Do you have a total? The, yes. Did you? Okay. Did you include anything about the statutory mandate of the board of abatement? Um, I have the board of abatement. <coughs> that was in that handbook. That's in the handbook. Yep. And it says, you know, it's actually, it's copied right it's here. It yeah, says taxes, except this is a, mis as you would probably know, taxes are charges in which there is a manifest no, error. And that is total. what the board can debate in deliberation whether or not that meets that call. Where is that? That's actually right there, Mary, in here. This is, this cites the statutes in the, in the form that you can get. $3.30. Um, okay, so everybody can hear. Don't, don't you have one? No, I just had the uh, agenda, which I can stand up. Okay. Oh, this is just the agenda. Thanks. Dorinda that has. Thing. The Dorinda has. The Dorinda has the number. No, he's fine. He's Dorinda has the number. So okay. Listen up. Okay. So for including taxes and interest for the year 2015 is one thousand two hundred and fifty-seven dollars and fifty cents. For 2016, it is $822.78. And for 2018, it's interest and penalty of, I didn't add those, but uh, that's for $232.72. Georgia, would you mind repeating the three numbers again? 2015 includes the taxes, interest, and penalty. And that amounts to one thousand two hundred and fifty-seven fifty. For two thousand and sixteen, that includes taxes, penalty, and interest in the amount of eight twenty-two seventy-eight. And then for two thousand and eighteen, they paid the principal on May first, so there is two hundred and thirty-two seventy-two left in penalty and interest. How much of the 2015 is tax? The principal for taxes is $994.08. And on 2016? $682.90. So, how do we want to proceed? I say we hear the issue. I, I like let, them, let them present their case. Mm -hmm. And again, I think as Mary said, um, 
you know, it really is at our discretion. So I think we should get the facts, um, how it arrived here, and then ask I guess that's questions. I guess that's fine with me. I mean, there's 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 nothing any of us I don't think would have done any any differently had we known that the request was different. Not, yeah. As unsettling as it is. Uh, so. This handbook has a, a procedural, you know, the way to go. Right. That's I, mean, we're I know, I know, don't yeah. wave it at me, please. So what we're, what you're saying is we're handling it the right way, Sarah, in your opinion, right? If we go ahead. The, if, if Phil's suggestion, they present, you ask questions, they leave, you decide whether or not to deliberate in public or in private. Right, yep. That's pretty much it. Okay. Pretty basic. Okay. So with that, we are ready to hear from you folks. Is it all right if I tell you what our case is, or do you we need to swear in a witness? Uh, I can tell you what I do. I don't think we're going to swear you in. Okay. You can go ahead and call. So that's what you're, this is, it's unfortunate, but um, I did the title search. I do title searches myself. So I came here, and I don't come here often. I'm usually up in Chittenden <coughs> County or Franklin County, and did the title search. Um, I noticed in the land records from my, and I got back up to my attorney's opinion, that the Bissonettes had a history of not paying taxes on time. So I then found, I went looking through and I found that actually the town had foreclosed on them. And then, but I found that finally recorded in the land records was a notice of redemption that I guess they brought themselves current. Got me a little nervous. Then I didn't know how you do the taxes here. A lot of times the, there's a book with delinquent taxes in it. So I went to a person here, and I don't know if Mary Keg is the person. She's the assistant clerk. And I went to her and said, I'm concerned about delinquent taxes here. Have the business paid their taxes? How do you go about doing it in your office? And she said, I can give you a printout. So she gave me this printout. I have a couple of copies, uh, if that will be helpful. But I gave her that printout, and she showed me that 2017 on, they had paid everything and everything was current. And I said, so that means they don't own anything? And she said, yes, that's the report. That's how I proceeded. I then asked her that. I wrote down in my attorney's opinion on the front page, taxes paid through 2018, which is what she told me. So I went back feeling this, comfortable. Is this supposed to, are we supposed to distribute this? You can. Those are three pages. They're all okay. the same. Um, and I made my notes to know that because I always do to make sure I'm covering my own thought and making sure that I check if there's delinquent taxes. So that's what I did, and then I never heard anything about it. In the meantime, apparently they hadn't paid their taxes, and delinquent notices were going out. Um, and the delinquent notice we have is going to Francis Cannon, the new owner. Uh, at Blakely Road in Colchester, which apparently is the Bissonettes. No, that's address. not how they've been going out. Sorry. Well, I don't know, Southern Road. That's the latest one that just we tried to send out. To the Bissonettes? We've been, they've been going out, tax notices go out once a month to the Bissonettes. I can give you copies of them. But it didn't go to my client is the problem. We had no address on your client up until two weeks ago. All right, well, that would be her basis. She never got notice. Wait, um, hold on. I want to clarify something. Not. You must know that the law states whoever owns the property on April 1st gets the taxes, correct? I know that, and she's now paid it. I'm just telling you she didn't know because she didn't receive it. But, but that bill went to, that, that pertains to a bill that the Bissonettes were, they needed to pay. Right, but the Bissonettes didn't know they owed it because at least they didn't admit to it at the closing. I don't okay. represent the Bissonettes. I went to a closing with a printout showing my clients. So, sir, why, why, should, why should that be our problem? One is, be, um, well, which, which year? Are you talking 2018? No, we're talking no. about what you want the to have abated. All right, well, I want, I would ask that the, the, certainly the interest and the penalties, and, and my client would like to amend it, and she filled out the application, the taxes, I was told by this office and given a printout that they are now current on their taxes. I asked for a printout. I was told it was done via who, who printouts. Gave the, who gave you the printout? Uh, someone up Mary, in the top corner, Mary, Mary something K. K. Marika. Marika. 
told me that the, oh, yeah. I, and now I remember that now that I see that this is the clerk, that she wasn't here, but she could help me with the taxes because I was concerned about it. I said, do I go to the tax collector to find out? And she said, I can just get you a printout of what they are. So why would this printout come out because like that? Because it's only printing out for the year 2017. Yeah. But I asked for, are they delinquent in taxes? And for the clerk to tell me that, well, they're... I'll get you a printout to show you what taxes are due on delinquencies and then not say, well, I could have gone back even farther. That's why I approached who was here. Could you tell me how I find out if the bassinets are paying their taxes or is there a delinquency? She handed me that. Which, which, says, says, which clearly says tax year 2017. Right, which would mean, she's telling me that shows that they're current. And I said, so what are they current to? And she says... They're paid through 63018, the taxes on this property. So I felt comfortable having dealt with this person who said, this is how you find out about delinquent taxes when she hands me a printout that I can go back and say, here's the printout. There's nothing to show in the past. She's current. Now I find out that there's an extensive printout that she could have given me that she didn't. That's Did why she I ever refer you to the delinquent tax collector? No, she said something like the person wasn't there that day. This was... But she could get it. I was here on uh, um, this is dated April, April 11, 11, 2018. So she said, I can help you out with the delinquent taxes, and that's what she gave me. So I'm saying as a basis, even if you don't agree with the taxes on the amendment, that certainly it's the penalties and the interest are not fair for those years when my client was relying on me saying, I checked with the town. I know there's no delinquency. I asked them. I said, we sort of joked about uh, the bisonettes. There was all sorts of stuff in the land records about failure to pay things when due and everything, and then yet, and, and even a foreclosure. But now things were cool. Did, so the, did the bisonettes and their attorney certify a closing that the taxes were paid today? They don't certify anything. They just looked at the closing statement and say it's accurate and sign off on it. Well, and I've since written the attorney, and he goes, I don't know where the bisonettes are anymore, and you'll have to. So he's taking our no responsibility. So this is dated 411. Taxes for 2018 weren't even issued on 411. Correct. So there again, how would we have been able to mail a tax bill to I I don't know. But I it, but and it clearly states and it's VSA 32 VSA 3651 the owner as of April 1, which was the Bissonnette remains liable for the year's taxes regardless of subsequent conveyances. This was conveyed after April 1. So the owner of record, which follows the property, is the one that should have been taken care of. And that's a, that's, a, <coughs> that's what you sent the notice to, right? The business? It gets it every <coughs> single month I can give you years worth of copies. I can't speak for the bisonettes. I'm just saying it is, to me, it's inequitable to charge this person interest and penalties when I came in here to ask, is there interest and penalties owed, and told, here, here's a printout, there are none. And, and now they're being told to pay interest and penalties. Whether you want to do the principal, I would hope that that would be the case too. I can't, I did not, the current bill that did not get paid, unfortunately, you didn't have a correct address. You weren't provided a correct address. That's up to you. She's now paid the principal. It's the interest and penalties. I think she was just talking about adding. I'm most concerned with charging taxes, interest, and principal when I came in here and specifically asked, could you tell me and give me a printout after she told me that's the way it's done, then give me one for this property. And she says, here it is. Otherwise, I would have demanded that the people pay it at closing, that you owe delinquent taxes pay it. Now, they're telling me they don't know where they are, and their attorneys tell me not my problem. Was, was well, this a private closing? Yes. And you were the closing attorney? I was the closing attorney. And when was that? This was April 20th, April 20th of 2018. There's also three okay. owners on this property as well, prior. It was the Bissonettes, uh, Russell Daigle, and Robert Whitten. So I can't believe all three people have disappeared. I'm going to have to find out where they are. That's not going to be an easy task. And I have a feeling, given their history dealing with the town, they're going to tell me 
something impolite. So I have a couple of questions, since this is something that I deal with all the time. The first thing is, when was the closing for this? What was the exact date? They said April 20th. April 20th. April 20th. April 20th. And mm -hmm. so the last 18. time you contacted the office was April 11th? I was here on April 11th. Did you contact the office between April 11th and April 20th to ask if anything else had been filed? We any? called in about, yes, about late, about unrecorded documents had come in <coughs> since the 11th. We do okay. that after each closing. I didn't ask again about taxes because I was told right. that they were already paid through June 30th of 2018. Okay, so a couple of other things. Um, you knew the property had was a problematic. I can't. I don't. I can't answer for what Marika did or what what question was asked or what happened there. But I can tell you that. You, so you say that you knew it was a problematic tax property, right? You knew they had. Well, because history. I saw something in the land records, but then I saw on page 99. Uh, or volume 99256, that a notice of redemption had been filed for paying delinquent taxes. Right. And then that made me suspicious that I should ask someone here, how does it work here? Uh -huh. How do I find out if she's paid all her taxes? And she said, you get a printout, and mm -hmm. that's what she gave me. Mm -hmm. And I was assuming that she must not going to give me the whole history of zeros for previous <coughs> years, that there was no balance carried over for that year, and that's the total. But that's didn't you notice, David, that the redemption was uh, at 4212, so that the difference right. between 12 and... And that's why I asked if you had a book here that shows me, but that's why I asked, how have they done since? Are there delinquent taxes? And was said, I can help you and get you a printout to show you any delinquent taxes, and that's what she handed me in the response to that. I don't know how else to go on your computer. I wasn't going to go on your computer and find out about previous years that were before when I was there. She told me that that was the printout showing where they were current, she said, through 6.30.18. But she also told you, you said earlier, that the delinquent tax collector was not in the office that day. She said she could tell me what the delinquent taxes were. Well, did she tell you the tax collector was not in that day? That was. I believe she said that they, she wasn't there or it was lunch hour or something. I said, well, how do I find out? She said, I can tell you, and went and got me the information. So, David, in this um, this application was filed by Francis Cannon. Are you Francis? This is Francis. You said, I'm trying to bring a suit against him, which is wiping me out financially. This is, this is something that we were writing about. We, this was the first time we, we had seen the, um, the notice, and this is not the case. Do you own the property? She is. Okay. Can we hear from I you, advised please? her. So no, I understand that you're her mom, but as right. the owner of the property, can you hear from me, please, to well, answer Mary's know. question? I said in your application, we wrote, I am trying to bring a suit against him, which is wiping me out financially. This is, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, is him uh, David? Um, Goldberg? I, Greenberg. Sorry. Yeah, it's actually, his name is written incorrectly in this, uh, on the first page. It's written as Greenwood, Greenberg. Um, yes, so I will admit that the notice for delinquent taxes shocked me a lot and I was needing advice from my mother. She helped me write this notice. So when I received this alarming notice for $4,639, um, this is the first thing that I have seen about taxes since I bought the property. So however many letters were sent out, and I'm getting to your question, my apologies. Um, however many letters were sent out for notices to pay taxes, I was waiting for those letters. My mailing address is 30 Spring Street, Burlington, Vermont. My apologies if that was not communicated. It's written on one of the closing documents. I don't know which document. A lot of the documents reported here. Okay, well, however, my apologies for that. I don't know which document it is. I can look for that. But there has never been a mailbox on the property that I bought, it's a camp. There's there's no mailing address. Um, so for whatever source of the reason for confusion for the notices that were lost or sent back, 
I was not aware of it. Well, how, are, how are we supposed to contact you if you don't give an address on a document that's my, filed in the land records? I'm not, I'm not sure. This is the first property that I owned. My official, my official address and mailing address has been the same for many years. It's recorded. Um, it's my voting address. It's recorded by the I'm not saying that you're not there. All I'm saying is how are we as a town to send you bills if we don't, if you don't have you or your attorney or your mother or whoever, go file something with the town so we can find you. So typically, Francis, when, if I may call you Francis, sure. that when, when your attorney files the property transfer tax return, mm -hmm. they are responsible for filing that and for putting mm -hmm. your correct address on that paperwork. That address is where the town looks to send the new owner mm -hmm. correspondence. It is your responsibility to notify the town. It is not our responsibility to chase you down. Um, and mm -hmm. so if someone you hired potentially didn't put the right information on the paperwork, that is not the result of the town's responsibility or, or anything on our That is entirely the responsibility of the person who was charged with filing that document, a tax document. So you mentioned your voter uh, addresses, Spring Street, et cetera, that you lived in. If that is your legal address, mm -hmm. the person who filed that paperwork on your behalf or for you should have had that information. And quite frankly, it sounds like that is very much um, linked to the source of this problem for you. I also just want to go over the statutes. So this is the, this, these are what abatement is allowed. Okay. The board may abate in whole or part taxes, interest, blah, blah, blah other than those arising out of the corrected classification of homestead or non-residential property that doesn't apply to us. In the following cases, taxes of persons who have died insolvent. You have not died insolvent. Taxes of persons who have been removed from the state. You have not been removed from the state. Taxes of persons who are unable to pay their taxes, interest, and collection fees. That's not the discussion here. Taxes in which there's a manifest error or a mistake of the listers. This is not a mistake of the listers. Taxes upon real or personal property lost or destroyed during the tax year. Not again, not happens. Um, then there's something about people who file an exemption to claim on before May or before after. after it's, a bet, it's a bet thing. Taxes upon a mobile home from a town during the tax year as a result of the change in the mobile home part. Nope. Boards of abatement of amount of tax shall automatically abate to any collected interest or fees relating to the amount. That's it. Those are the conditions to offer an abatement. So, what I mean, you can just say it yourself. That's just talking about how to collect. So I think the issue is, for us uh, as a board, and of course, you know, the board is going to decide whether or not to hold its deliberations in pri private or public, at least I as a member of the Board of Abatement am not seeing a situation where you fall into this category, statutorily. May I just ask a question? I'm, I'm really sorry if I advise my daughter poorly about everything, but I, this is all new to us. I've done real estate for a long time, and it, usually there's open communication between the clerk's office and the lawyer. And it seems like there was an error made. It seems like the, the, the person, Mary K.E.G., was not forthright in the transaction. And I don't know if that's included in the abatement, but it's that's something you about the statute yourself. So, so if she makes a mistake, <laughs> it's still a good Well, I mean, I have us. different opinions about that, and I think maybe well, the board's going to discuss that going to really herself. talk about <clears throat> Marika's um, statements to David uh, Greenberg, then we're going to have to have Marika into a hearing. It's not fair for everyone to talk about the hearsay, what she said yeah. and didn't say. I agree. Well, I, I, I know it's just not. She's a, she's a very trusted member of our <clears throat> town of Middlesex uh, personnel, and I'm just not going to sit here I'm and make a decision apart. when Marika didn't know that this was coming up. Marika wasn't asked. Relate anything about it? To well, anybody? I think ultimately the question comes back to can the Board of Abatement even abate these taxes? I mean, even before we get to all this other stuff, I don't think the Board of Abatement has the ability to bait this because there was an error during closing. Sorry, but I don't think it's in there the wasn't statute. An error during closing. Well, can you there find, wasn't can you, can you find a statute that was three hundred ninety-three dollars and thirty cents of interest and penalties that was charged? Okay. That's what I think. Can you can you point me? Can you direct me to a statute well, that will address this? To give this board the power to, them to do that. They want to sue the town over three hundred ninety-three dollars and thirty cents 
for negligently giving out an amount. I think this isn't just a... Well, I think you should... I, do, no, you're going to sue the town? No, I'm just saying that's what's so ridiculous. They were asking for the town's cooperation. Certainly I was for $39.30 that they have been charged of interest and penalties because someone here gave me the wrong information. I got that printout. I don't know Unfor how it Unfortunately, I sir, I, I think you're at the wrong form. Well, I, I mean, didn't if know that, that is the state statute, and I'm... <laughs> I'm relying that Sarah has brought up the state statute. That doesn't address your issue at all. Right. And it is difficult to hear you continue to disparage, potentially, the words of someone who isn't present, especially given the stature of that person in our town and the detail with which that person is known for completing tasks. Mm -hmm. So if the question were posed, for example, are there any taxes laid on this property? The presumption might have been you were asking for the current tax year, in which case the current tax year information was apparently provided to you. But we were not there. There is no recording. We do not know what your questions were. And, and you so think she's going to remember me? I, I, what I am saying to you is that you are in a pickle um, because it sounds like the, the, com the complaint or request doesn't rise to the level of an abatement in the first place. And secondly, that if had I been in your shoes, I probably would have followed up with the delinquent tax collector, especially respectfully, uh, as you say that you've done this sort of work for many years. Um, I don't think I would have simply taken at face value one piece of paper on a day, nine days prior to a closing on a property with a first time home buyer who's looking to me to be someone who they can respect and trust. Unless there's more facts to be presented, I recommend we go into a private deliberations now. May I ask a quick question? Or is that not? Yeah. Of course you can. So, certainly there are the two questions of the um, delinquent taxes owed by the, these events. That's my understanding. Am I still charged to pay those? Taxes follow the property. It's, they're a lien. They are a lien. They follow the property. Tell her what happens when you have a lien against the property. It's not going to be subject to a tax sale, is it? Of course it is. Could be. Sure. I would think Absolutely. it would be. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I, mean, I believe that might have been written. I don't know. I try to give people after so many warnings, I try to tell them avoid attorney fees, avoid these extra fees because they will go to tax sale. I mean, this is how the town works on this tax money, and if we don't have it. So uh, I think the issue is here. If, if this is the wrong venue, this board doesn't have the authority to act. That's pretty black and white to me. I mean, that doesn't mean you don't have the right to sue the town. Certainly you can sue the town. I understand that, but I'm, but I'm, just, I'm just saying we can't, we can't just say okay, there's a chance that our employee made a mistake, so we're just going to say everything's okay and make it go away. That's beyond the scope of our authority. We well, can't do that. I think it could be considered a mistake of the listers when someone acting on their behalf says, I can give you, I can she give you. She wasn't asking on behalf of the listers. The listers are not tax, we're not tax collectors for the town. We assess the value of properties. Okay, I'm just putting on the, the case. The select came down board here sets three, the tax three, rate and our treasurer and tax collects the money. collector collects the funds. I mean, <laughs> you folks have to have a decision to make because, uh, and you have to understand where, where we're sitting, and I'm not trying to give you a hard time, and I'm not trying to give you, sir, a hard time, but I agree. I mean, and I'm not an attorney, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk in the office and accept a printout from somebody who, A, wasn't the town clerk, B, certainly wasn't the, the town treasurer or delinquent tax collector, and go ahead and have a closing and knowing that there was a history of problems with tax payments on this property. So uh, for whatever reason, you didn't dig a little deeper. Um, that to me, that to me is on you. And, uh, and that's why she's mentioning suing me. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, maybe she should be suing both of us. I, I don't know. Oh. But, uh, but don't I don't curse. think, <laughs> I think this is, I don't think this I is, I, yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, the, the statute to me is pretty clear, and I actually should have brought that up in the beginning because I read that whole thing uh, the other night, and I thought, wow, how does, this, how does this fit into here? And it really doesn't. 
can just make a request. Francis and I are new to this, and we're, we're, we're all a little disgruntled about the system because I, I trust that David, in good faith, tried to, to do his job, and that maybe there was some miscommunication in the office that day. That being the case, we recognize that, yes, you need to have your taxes, the delinquent taxes paid, but what about the penalties and, and the interest? That's something that we can still request as an empathy gesture, and that we can really understand our situation is, is that we can build that down as much as possible, but it would really help taxes. But she is strapped for cash. Well, I don't right? think we have, I don't we think don't we have, have the right to abate the, the, no, the interest to, or penalties well, I mean, either. I we have to do what the statute says. It's right. not, we don't have this wiggle room. I mean, um, you know, there are all sorts of other reasons why I can think to disagree with that. And you're right about the abatement. When the, ta when the taxes are abated, the other taxpayers make up for the difference. Everybody else has to chip in to pay for those taxes that are due. It's not, they just don't disappear in the air. The but this is an enormous responsibility for Francis. Well, and that she, some Francis, I'm the mother of a 28-year-old. I completely understand. I her we, most of us here are parents. We've been through it. It's an incredible experience. I'm very glad to see you in our town. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to I Middlesex. hope that you, you maintain an active participation in a thriving community of young people. This part yes. sucks. And sometimes, quite frankly, it, it, it will sound trite, but it is not. It's not sincerely. Sometimes lessons come hard. Um, I would love to share with you personally on the, on the side my own uh, eye-opening experience of my own first house buying experience at closing and the $5,000, which um, I didn't have. So fortunately, uh, you were able to secure your property, although you now have to figure out how to deal with the delinquent taxes and penalties and interest. Um, but it's, sometimes life lessons come hard, and as Peter was saying, this isn't within our realm to simply just say, we could dig right down. We, we don't have the authority, it's, it doesn't fall within the So what, the what, what I would suggest. <coughs> Where is your camp? <coughs> I just want to five thirty three said five five thirty one. Five thirty three, but now it's five thirty one. So the other thing that, that I would pass along to you folks is Dorinda, our trusted, faithful treasurer and delinquent tax collector, will make a deal, an installment payment deal to collect the taxes. So it's not like we are gonna to say to you, you have thirty days to pay these taxes or we're sending your property to tax sale. That is not the case. Our goal is to collect the taxes but we try and be reasonable and fair as we can in doing that. So but each day they're delinquent is an added interest. Once a month it gets added, but if you pay the back, I mean, if, if you pay the back taxes, then you can pay off the interest and in payments or something like that. But if we only charge the interest, which is a half a percent a month, and that gets charged on the 20, uh, first of each month. So, so anyway, that's that's up to you to potentially contact her and make the deal. But there is no, it's not like the world has come to an end if these taxes aren't paid in the next short period of time. What we're concerned about is getting them paid over time. So, with that, I would suggest, and I think we're probably in agreement, that we deliberate in open session and potentially make a determination that we don't feel that this is a request that can be brought before the Board of Abatement because it doesn't meet the criteria in the First, you should take statute. a motion. You should need to take a vote about whether or not to have it an open deliberation. We can do that first, yeah. yes. But unless, unless people want to talk about this further, I don't think there's a lot to talk about. <clears throat> I would accept a motion to agree that we will deliberate in open session right now. I'll make that motion. Second. Any Francis, further? Your, your other co-owners are equally liable, so um, I don't know if she doesn't have, she she doesn't have, oh, she previous, doesn't have co owners. The previous owners. The previous, previous owners. owners. Oh, the previous owners. owners. I'm sorry. So, so it's been it's been uh, moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we have made a decision that we are going to deliberate in open session. So now we're deliberating. I think we have to follow the statute. Yeah. I don't think we have any room there. 
I agree. Yeah, there's no no real deliberation. I no, 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 no. But I'm just saying, if, if if we're not going to deliberate, someone needs to make a motion. Well, you know, they she did check taxes or charges in which there's manifest error. Yeah, you know, I, that's just from the BLCT. I, that's why I checked the statute, and I because I didn't remember reading that in the statute, so I went direct to the oh. to the green book. Oh, so that's not in this. All I'm saying is right. that I'm no. not prepared to vote <laughs> for anything unless I hear Marika's rebuttal of, the, of what, what happened here. All I'm saying is that is what I think. And if you look at the check that she made. I, my argument is that I don't think that it, this applies. I don't think there's, if you're looking at the statute, I'm saying that <coughs> we can't even get to what Marika has to say because we're at taxes, of, right. because taxes which there's a manifest error. So there's no manifest error in the taxes. The tax, right. there's no, we didn't charge them to twenty thousand right. dollars, and you know, there's no manifest error in the taxes, and nor is there a mistake in the lister. So it doesn't apply. There's nothing that says taxes in which that were not correctly relayed in a public communication to someone who asked. I mean, if you, uh, Mary, you're a lawyer, you know where the I responsibility know lies. That argument. I'm just saying. I mean, to be candid, when we read it, I didn't hear you hear that part, and so I just wanted to make sure that everyone was. You know, this reminds me of the time that I got a call and a notice from a collection agency in the state of Ohio saying that I owed $176 for taxes because the state of Ohio had made a mistake on my income tax when I was 24 years old, and they couldn't find me. So they continued to haunt me for 20 years, and when they finally haunted me, I had a lien against me in Franklin County, Ohio, for taxes that... I had no idea I owed. How could I possibly? Because the state of Ohio had given me a refund on that year's taxes. So I was bound. I paid it. Charlie disagreed, but I paid it. So I mean, that's there's these things are these entities are ruthless when it comes to stuff. Like I'm not this. saying I disagree with you. Okay. I just wanted to raise that issue. So, <coughs> is, is is anyone willing to make the motion? So, Peter, no. I, can I clarify with what you were saying before? Because I think that this is the point you were making when we came to this discussion. Sure. Is that the, the, the application for abatement, the, first of all, what she's requested, manifest error, doesn't apply, period. We've, there is no mistake in the right. taxes or what's due. The other choices, Mary, around... Well, I understand the other okay. choices. Why she, could come, why she could come to us, um, unless she's indigent... Which, no, I understand that okay. none of the others apply. And, and the fact that Dorinda 
has a reputation in town for being someone who works with landowners in Middlesex, I would think would be something that would be potentially helpful for uh, for Ms. Cannon, for Francis, uh, to know in coming to us and bringing this to light. It's good that we know where she lives now. Um, and we have her address, and Dorinda, <coughs> has, as, as Peter pointed out, Dorinda does work with folks in town to help them make sure they can make their payments to avoid taxes. Nobody wants things to go to tax sale. Um, it looks bad for the town, <laughs> frankly. It's bad for everybody. Um, uh, so it's not a question of whether or not we want to work with her. It's that the basis for which she's come to us doesn't apply. I understand. Okay. I understand all that. So that being there, I just felt nothing we could do to, to be clear that I didn't hear it when you were talking about the, the various reasons, and I'm assuming that since she checked that, that was her ground. I'm well, not saying whether it applies here. Right. Well. So, board members, where does that leave us? Are we ready to make a motion? If we're not going to deliberate, we need to make a motion. He's looking at you to make the motion. I move that we don't deliberate. Because it doesn't apply to how to file an abatement. No, he's over. No, no. no. What are we no. asking? We're going, to, we're going to move. We are not ruling on this request because we don't believe it meets the standard for the Board of Abatement. So, that's a good one. That's, that's, that's nicely phrased. Mm -hmm. What? So, did you move that? So, you moved that? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I just want to clarify. So, we're <laughs> putting it another way. We don't have jurisdiction because <coughs> the statute right. doesn't right. have right. jurisdiction. Is there, is there a second to Liz's I, motion? I second. I second. Liz, I second. Yeah. Okay. Any Steve, further discussion? One of us pick somebody. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Okay, so Any opposed? So Mary moved and Steve seconded. No, no, I didn't. Liz, Liz, Liz moved. Liz moved. Liz moved. Liz seconded. You know, the women are all funny. I mean, it goes to me. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you, you folks have, have choices to make about how you want to proceed from here. All right, thank you for your consideration. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Francis. You know Somewhere above me, right? The center road. Yes. Oh, center road. Yeah. Yeah. Just before Zedon Road. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's oh. in the dip where you go up Zedon Road? Yeah. No, before. 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 Yeah. Before. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Down near where the forest fire warden lives. What's his name? Um, Paul. Yeah, works in the Merrill? No, no. Prince Yes. Yes. Just him down the bottom of the It's the second one to ask for it. Yeah. So it's on the left hand side. Yeah. Is it the brown one close to the road? No, it sets way back. It sets back a little way. It's a little white camp. It's a grand white vinyl. It's the last property before you get to the old Rich's place. I don't know. The one that sets right on the road. The love road? The love house? The love house? I mean, no. used to be all well, we were loves. supposed to have a quick BCA meeting right now if you want okay. to move in. We have we actually one JP here besides Peter. Is that Jan? Yeah. That's Jan. Jan. Come on, you got to step up. <laughs> so, so we can get the this BCA in this room. No, Are you sure? All right. Dorinda? Dorinda? No, thank you. Right. I don't know. Another standing up. Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, Eric, could you mind handing me the agendas back there? Warmer, colder, colder, go up, go up, go up. Up, up, up. Right there. Memorial Okay. Can you get through, Dick? Yeah, they're staying there. Okay. Liz. Hi. No. Keep not coming. Keep them coming, Dad. Yeah. And I thought it was insensitive to someone. I didn't get it. You know, probably because. Grab one of those. Mary, you've got one. Right? Thank you. No, I mean, I, would, I felt like under attack. Mm -hmm. I felt like, I felt like, they'd already said, you have to go And I know you were defending I just think it could have, it could have. This is for Steve. Oh, so we need to move on. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah. 
So I just feel like we do that a lot. And it's, I know, that's why I, it makes it not a friendly thing. I'm sitting out here. Okay. That's all. My friend Barry, he's going to be sitting next to him. He's getting a ride for me. Cool. Well, I'm so sorry, and I apologize. No, I, I'm what? just saying I think we need to be more mindful of just our tone and how we're um, you know, we often have a, um, just when a lot of people come in with some sort of complaint or concern that they have, we tend to be very defensive, and I think it's a good idea to just be able to listen to what people say, and, and I mean, I totally agree with the outcome. I'm not, I, I'm not at all arguing with that. I just think that no, no, I, there was I some attacking, and I just didn't think that was fair to these people. I, 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 I agree with that. I mean, I think that... That's I why I always try to introduce myself, because I remember the days when yeah. I came here. It was like, well, she's yes, just this young woman. People are like, really kind you know, of rude to me. It, yeah, and I felt like... Well, that's why I asked like, everybody to introduce themselves. No, it's yeah. good. I'm just um, but saying, let's be problem, more mindful. The problem for me was, is... Harry screwed up, to be honest. Well, you know, and, was yeah, but he's trying. He's trying to put it on. Right. The other thing is, you have to read my other emails to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I was extremely mm -hmm. and I tried to. Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah. Whatever. Okay, guys. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. move. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm sorry. What is so the we have adjourned the board of abatement. We are now. Yeah. Am I in charge again? Yes, you are. You're in charge for the first time tonight. Get to work. Are you the chair? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yes, she is. Okay, uh, we're calling the meeting to order at 6.30. Um, no guests, right? No. Okay. no. Uh, Jan, see. thank you for showing up. Washington Central Unified Union School District. No, you didn't ask if there were any amendments. Oh, are there any amendments? No. Um, the special Elections Organization designated BCA members to assist the town clerk at the Washington Central Unified Union School District special meeting elections at the Middlesex Town Clerk Office on May 7th. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. You're talking about. I thought you had said May 7th. Sorry. What is it? May 1st. I'll volunteer to assist May 7th. Well, I was having amendments. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I was like, I've been staring at this thing for the longest time. I'm like, going to. Any amendments? Yeah, so, yes, back to that, that one first. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so amended to say May 21st, 2019. Yes. Thank you. So, I need people to work from 7 to noon. Because Marika's going to come in at noon. Oh, that's yours. Right? Anyway, yeah. So, uh, Nancy Riley, if we can add her to the list. Nancy Riley, do you want to come in? Okay. The only the only time I What's can come is after work. Twenty first. That's a Tuesday, and I know I'm driving up to uh, it's a Tuesday. Maine for a conference, and I have to be there, so I can call. Well, do we have a meeting? Do you want me at the end of the day, like for the afternoon? You know, uh, Marek is going to see the thing is we're also having a select board meeting on the twenty first as well. Oh yeah. And remember, we decided not to change the meeting. May twenty second. Yes, we did. <laughs> and, I'm calling in. In. <laughs> and I'm calling in, so I have to get to Maine and be seated at a place where I can call in. You're calling in. Five. Are you going to be here? I'll be here. I was going to say, I can, I can yeah. come, come and help. Are you going to be here? I'll be here. Okay. Do you, do you need somebody in the morning? Is that what you're saying? I, I can't be alone. I have to have okay. someone else in the morning. I can't. Uh, Steve Martin. Thank you. I can come whenever you need somebody, so... I just need, yeah. if we're gonna if we're gonna use a tabulator for some reason they think they're gonna use tabulators. I don't know why because we haven't had a single vote yet. But there are ten races. There are ten people. I mean, this is the uh, ah. Yeah, there you go. What I want to know is why Charlie didn't get the death board. Because his wife was going to divorce him. <laughs> it's a simple <laughs> thing. <laughs> yep, there you go. And that, uh, I am willing to go to the bank with that one. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it's recorded. <laughs> and it's recorded, yes. <laughs> so so we get a copy of that to send to Charlie. Sure. Yeah. I'm happy to there too in the tabulator. I'll come in and do the tabulator thing with you and I'll stick around for a while. Okay, you want to come in and do the tabulator at 7 o'clock? Yeah. All right. Thank you like the early shift. Okay. Peter, you, do can, the you can have an extra cup of coffee. And then Peter, and then Steve, you want to come in at, at, at right after Peter? Because Carrie's going to go run away after that. Are you going to hang around? Are you going to? Are you going to oh, he said we hang around. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know. Sometimes yeah, it just friendly. opens it. Then, I, well, usually yeah. when you do the tabular, you do it, then you go off. So that's because you have other people volunteering, but now I'm volunteering. There you go. Okay, so Peter, I'm going to put you down from seven to nine. Okay. Anybody? I'll be here 
before nine. So you're gonna do nine to 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 eleven. Whenever you need. Thank you. Just let me know what you need to fill. And uh, I'll tell <laughs> <laughs> Not that bill. <laughs> you want me to come in at eleven? No, I'm gonna actually gonna have either Nancy Riley. Suggesting. If you guys could prove Nancy Riley, we can have either Nancy Riley or or Dorinda. <coughs> <coughs> I'm fine. It, it, I'm sorry, does it end at noon? No. No, no, no. 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 <coughs> no. Okay. I mean, I can come in. So, Is that you've got the people you need? Yes. 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 Oh, I think so. If you guys, you're, 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 if, if you guys can frog, approve, uh, if you can approve uh, Dorinda and Nancy O'Reilly to work on the, to be full workers, then so I think we're covered. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Wait. I made that much purpose, Sarah. Oh, you could make it yourself. Right. right. And Mary. And okay, great. So Nancy Riley and Linda, and you guys want to take? Is that okay with you? Well, yeah. all those in yeah. favor. And, well, hello, Liz. Liz. Sorry. <laughs> all those in favor. I post. Uh, okay. Do you want me to come just before the meeting, or do you not? Are you full now? Are you, you, no, I think that the I think we're, we'll be fine at okay. the meeting. We just okay. if anybody comes in to vote, uh, Marika will be here, but we'll have everybody here will be able to be uh, backup. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Designating ballot clerks for the May. That should say that's it. First. So right. moved. Yeah. yeah. Second. Oh, we did that. We did. That's oh. all. Did <coughs> okay. yeah. we do all? Three did we do all these? Appointing two JPs. No, we need to have two JPs to carry uh, House bound voters. I move for Charlie and Peter. Okay. I'm seconded. Charlie. Oh, what else are you gonna do? Right. You're the only Republican, and oh, he, he's the independent. I'm not a Republican anymore. Oh, so you're an independent. <laughs> so yeah. Terry moved. Who seconded that? Bill. Bill seconded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's sure. just weird that we've had all these BCA meetings. We I have know. to do them by law. Okay. It's just like a, Let's keep okay. going. Uh, so reviewing voters who registered since <laughs> the BCA reviewed the checklist. For oh, that's in the back. Okay. Let's review it. Yeah. If you got any, if you got any complaints. I'm and, good. And I didn't forget. Wow, the he turned 18. Brendan von Kuhlen. He registered at the uh, meeting that wow. uh, came to the yeah. 32 meeting. I can't believe it. Why? I don't know. I, see it. It. I just remember <coughs> it was a Pardon. child. Okay. Yeah, they look. What? But how about Andrew Deppmeyer? I don't know this. Oh, Andrew? I'm thinking of Deppman. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Um, alrighty. So, do we have to make a motion? Well, no. did he approve no. the? Uh, no, you just no. have to review it. Actually, I'll just have it. Okay. okay. Approving the minutes from the March 26, 2019 BCA so meeting. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Any other things? Or is it time to adjourn? Scotland for wedding. Oh, nice. Well, it's coming into Scotland anyway. Maybe for <laughs> oh, you! Yeah. Oh, you are. You're getting. You're going to. No, you're no. getting married in Scotland. To a oh, I have oh, a. Nice. Um, I have a colleague who's going to Scotland in that same time frame. Is he coming yeah. to the wedding? I don't know. She. <laughs> she. Are we adjourning this one and then going back and funny? finishing yeah. the select board? Yeah, but I unfortunately need to go. So, so Mary, so you're going to have to finish okay. up the select board so meeting. Okay. To, well, I guess we're going to pass over goals. Yeah. Will we adjourn? Yeah, we're passing. Wait, we're adjourning. We're, we're adjourning the BCA. Second. That's been adjourned. Thank you, Jen. Okay. Bye, Jen. Have fun right. in Scotland. Thank you. Bye, guys. Anyone want to move approval of the April 26, 2019 select board minutes? You're right into the select board now. Well, I mean, yeah. we, we're going to pass. Go, I've got to go. Yeah. Gotta go. That's we're going to pass over the goals. So yeah. Mary moved. Yeah. Okay. Treasurer's report we already did. I don't even know where mm -hmm. we Who moved, made the motion? Um, For what? Minutes? Here, select the minutes. board agenda? I think, uh, it is. I think I did. No, that's yeah, all second. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's it. It's fine. I think we're done. Phil moved and Steve second. All yeah. those in favor say aye. Wait, aye. 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 Phil moved and Steve second. Yes. yes. Orders are done. Oh God, wait a minute. Orders are done. We talked about the access. Make sure you put twenty thirty on okay, your so your date so you can come and say goodbye to Mary. Where is it? It's a yeah. capstone. It's yeah. like an open house. Too. Okay. Who, who from community capital should give a little speech? Any other matter that may come come up for the board? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there any correspondence? Okay. Well, no, yes, but Peter, before you leave, do you want to quickly rich. discuss the bandstand thing? What, what are we going to do about the five hundred thirty-two dollars? Do you want me to put on the most the ballot the agenda for the twenty-first or? Yeah. So. 
Yes, just put it on the agenda for the 21st. Let's get, get into it tonight. Okay. Elliot, Elliot is all revved up. He's got the Attorney General's office involved already. So. For what? Well, I'm not going to get around that. The bandstand committee got a letter saying that they are liable for licensing fees for music that's paid at the bandstand. Because they're playing somebody else's music that's protecting. You mean like these people can't play like covers? Mm -hmm. Right. Like so pay. well, they can't. They Not can't play people. other people's music. They can play their own music, but they can't play other people's music. Anyway, it's a complicated yeah, issue. Phil and I have some peripheral experience in this area, and not a lot, but it's not. Yeah. 